hey, it's Matt's workbench, which I was really questioning on what to call this thing because up until now the channel's just been my name and uh, I feel like it needed to have a title of some sort. So Matt's workbench and on the workbench today is the Macintosh SE30. Now, quick disclaimer, what you're about to see is not an instructional video. It is also going to trigger some of you and that's absolutely fine. And if you see me doing something wrong and making mistakes, please put that in the comments because I do read those and I do want to get better at this. But what I hope that this video is for some people is an, an opportunity to say, hey, if you're just starting out and you're just getting into this, you can do this even if you're not perfect, even if you don't have top of the line equipment or you don't have tons of soldering skills. If you just want to get in there and try it, all you can got to do is just be careful, take your time, and if you make some mistakes, fix it. That, that That's all there is to it. So again, if you see me doing something that is just making you rip your eyeballs right out of the sockets, let me know. Put that in the comments. And uh, other than that, we're going to get right into recapping the Macintosh SE30. Okay, so it's time to get this thing cleaned up. Uh, last time we got all of the surface mount capacitors removed. And I think one of the questions that maybe you have that I have is should we desolder, you know, get some desoldering wick on there and get these cleaned up first? Or should we clean the board first and then do that? And I don't know which one's right or not, so we're just going to clean the whole thing first and then come in with the solder wick and then probably have to clean the whole board again. But then it will be really clean. So that's great. Uh, and you also might say, like, should you take these off before you get really crazy cleaning this stuff? And to me, the answer is uh, no, because that takes more time. And B, uh, these little clips here have been known to break um, just if you say bad things about them. So we're going to talk about how um, unique and beautiful each one of them are and how we would never think of putting them in a position that they would be uncomfortable in. And then make sure you uh, take uh, someone important's toothbrush that you have in your house and uh, get all this done and then just put it back where you got it. So I don't know how other people do this. Again, you know, you can go on YouTube and watch videos and so could I. And we're just going to pour it on the board. Oh, there you go. And then we're just going to hit some of the spots where that corrosion was its worst and just go to town, you know? See, oh, we got a little chunk. Where did that guy come from? I wonder what that's off of. Maybe that's just trash that fell on the motherboard from before, I don't know. We're being fairly gentle with this. Just trying to get into all the nooks and crannies. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Are you okay? Do you want to talk about it? See, you got to be gentle with those guys. They are very sensitive. Let's really get this vinegar down in here to the places that will never dry. And just a sprinkle. We're not in a hurry, you know? If you're doing a project like this, you better not have like anything big planned. Otherwise, you're just making questionable life choices. All right, we're going to get up on the ROM here. I don't see any corrosion, but he'd feel left out if we did not include him in what's going on. You ever do that? You ever have somebody who, uh, just because you're having a good time, they are offended because they're not having a good time in their life, and they want to make sure that... They want to make sure that everybody is on the <laughs> same level. So you want to include everybody. Alright, I think we're about ready for some rinsage. Q-tip time. I actually had some sitting down here in the workshop. That's amazing. All right, so let's just get in, soak her down, get into some of these places here. All 
All right, let's go rinse. So we're just gonna, I mean, this is not scientific, guys. We're just gonna rinse it off in the sink. Light spray of lukewarm water. I think that's probably about good. Just to maybe help it out a little bit, we're gonna hit it with some compressed air. Okay, so let's take a look. Actually, let's take this downstairs where the light's a little bit better. But I mean, I think overall, this thing is looking pretty snazzy. All right, so let's take a look at this board now that we got everything cleaned up. I think overall, it looks fantastic. Uh, again, it's still a little wet, but if we look, you know, here, you know, here was about the worst of that corrosion. Let's see if we can get some good sharp focus on that. And I think that cleaned up pretty good. You know, I think um, all in all, let's look over here by the, where this capacitor was. I think that looks good. I mean, there is some fuzz on these chips. Let's see if we can focus in right there. That looks good. I think we did a pretty good job. Now, you can judge me. And that's fine. But I think, uh, all said and done, we're ready to start putting stuff back together. All right, so I've never desoldered anything in my life, uh, properly, at least. And so why not? Why don't we just test it out on this somewhat valuable SE30 motherboard? Uh, so I've got my solder sucker right here, which is the, uh, it's the cheapest one I could find, so that's good. Uh, I got a little desoldering wick here, uh, just in case, you know, that works. Uh, so we'll try that. Uh, I got my brand new soldering iron from my soldering station that I've still never used. Uh, so that'll be fun to figure out how good that is. Again, that's the cheapest one I could find. Uh, and some uh, little extra solder just in case we need to add some to uh, to prime the pump here. Uh, so we'll see. This is the lead free, uh, which, you know, anything that has uh, got lead in it, you know, or just in general, anything that is toxic and could kill you um, probably works pretty good. So I'm sure that this won't work very well at all. But so let's just get in here, I guess. Um, I'm going to flounder through this right here with you. Uh, as far as the tip I got, I got this one with this like a little tiny chisel on it. So maybe we could just uh, set that on there and suck up, suck it. Just suck it. That does heat up pretty good. We got none. We didn't get any. Let's see. What well, we did, we just knocked it off. So I think the legs are still on here too. That wick does get a little hot. Well, it has removed some. This one here, we got a little leg on there. Let's see if we can... Get this heated up and then get that leg to pop off there. Where's my button on this guy? We are applying heat. I don't see any meltage. Which usually means the heat is going somewhere. Should I turn up the heat? You know what I think. I think this soldering iron is not the best. Alright, let's add a little bit of solder to this just to see if we can get it going. This won't even melt the solder, the brand new solder. Holy cow. There we go. All right, so we got some extra solder all over the soldering iron. All right, we got to turn this heat up or something because 
it is not near as hot as one would lead you to believe. Because the solder that is on the tip of the soldering iron, not molten. <sighs> this is unbelievable. Look at that. I'm touching it literally to the soldering iron and it's barely melting. You have to scrape her across the board. Hey, my laundry's done. Still nothing. There we go. Now we're melting. That did nothing. All right, there's that little leg. Yep, we're gonna get better at this. Hey, we did it. Wow. Now, if you're watching this and you are an expert at soldering, this video is not for you. I firmly believe that it does us some good to know that you can be terrible at something and still get things done. And that's, that's what this channel is all about, being bad at something and still succeeding. All right, one down. This is going to take forever. Okay, well, that, see, that's not a traditional way to do it by any stretch, but uh, let's take a look right here. We uh, just stuck the leg to the brand new solder. You know, I'm an end results guy. Well, it did come off. Um, it's right here. <laughs> What a disaster. Let's see if we can uh, clean this up a little better. That did nothing. All right, moving on. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Where have I gone wrong? All right, we're going to reevaluate our life choices and we'll be back. Okay, well, I'm done. And uh, the thing is, I didn't show the rest of it because it looked pretty much exactly like what I was doing before, which was struggling mightily and just trying and trying and trying. Uh, I did find out my soldering iron was in Fahrenheit instead of Celsius, so that. Uh, helped a little bit. Uh, I was felt a little more comfortable cranking the heat up at that point, and uh, and just going at it. So looking over here, you know, now this is starting to dry. I still feel like we could do a little better getting that stuff cleaned up uh, on those chips there. They still just look a little fuzzy for my taste. So we'll we'll hit that again. We'll get these uh, pads cleaned up. And then um, maybe try to put some new components on. I'm still not sure if I should remove uh, these little guys here. We'll see. We might do that. We might just leave those legs on and tack on to them. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But we'll take a look at that. Again, not the best job in the world. But I think it's going to work for what we're doing here. So, wish me luck! Uh, so I'm just using a little isopropyl alcohol. And we're just going to hit these bad boys. And make sure that they look good. Let's see if we're doing any good here. Oh yeah, we're getting something off of there. You're waiting to see if I'm going to forget one, aren't you? That looks pretty good. Uh, let's hit these guys up here. Just a little bit, because just didn't like the way they looked. And maybe that's dust on there. Let's see. We're definitely getting some gunk off of there. What do you think? Do you think that was dust, or do you think that was corrosion? I know what I think. I think it's whatever the worst possible possibility is and that's what it was I'm happy with the way this project is going I don't if you don't think so 
I mean, feel free to let me know. Also, I'm going to keep these little prongs here, and I'm just going to tap onto those bad boys. I know that that's going to drive you absolutely crazy, but uh, I feel like a, I'm going to do more damage than good trying to get those out. I already spent quite a bit of time on this one here, applying some heat, and you can probably see I got a little excited. If you can see that little mark right next to C2 there. So I stopped immediately. And uh, yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna just leave that alone. Okay, you know, I think it's time to start putting some capacitors back on this thing. Uh, I have written down a list of capacitors and where they go. So hopefully this will help us here. Most of these are forty-seven. Is it peak of? Pico Farad? Farad? I don't know. These guys here. So, what we got is 47 Pico Farad. And I went ahead and went a little higher voltage on all of these uh, just because, um, you know, I, I ordered a lot. And so, if I end up using them for another project or something like, out, like that, um, they'll be a little bit more versatile and they were not much more expensive. So we're going to figure out a way to uh, bang bang those right on there uh, and just see how it goes. And so I think what I'm going to do is I just want to try to get these as short as pot. I already messed it up. Let's take the, uh, the old tweezers. All right. So we're going to hit some tweezers, we're going to go to the left, we're going to go to the right, we've already kind of manhandled this one a little bit, but that's okay. So that's a okay height, I guess. That's going to set that sitting right like that. Now I know what you're saying. Oh, what side goes? Actually, I don't know. I think this is the positive side. I think it's opposite from the surface mount ones. The surface mount had the little mark on the negative side, and these got the mark on the positive side. But, you know, we better look that up real quick. Nope. Well, I'm glad to look that up. Uh, this is the negative side. Yeah, so the longer... Uh, leg is going to be positive and the shorter leg is negative and negative is also marked with the little stripe there so the way we're going to want to orient this on the board looks to me like that right do you agree with that we're going to do it so let's snip these little leggies down oh yeah i was going to change up my soldering iron tip too is this still hot mm -hmm. nope Okay, so let's change this out. Um, I'm not super impressed with this solder solder pin yet, but also I don't know what I'm doing either. Is that a good one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because I'm just figuring that all of this out for the first time. So we're going to go ahead and slide the collar back on. And tighten it down. I'm gonna start with 400. Is that a lot? I don't know. The the colorful side is negative. Can we say that together? The colorful side is positive. Negative. Dang it! I know I'm leaning that on the ram. I'm gonna tilt it back after I'm able to get that stuck on there. All right. Here's our lead-free solder. This is not going to work. Whoa, we're out of control. My God, I think that's stuck. It's a little ugly, but... Okay, let's come in from this side. On this one. All right, that's positive. All right, we're good. Good. 
Holy cow. I think that worked. Isn't that beautiful? No, not really. But uh, it's okay. All right. So we got that one, that was C1, and when we're going to move over to C12, oh my god, the cable to the soldering iron is stuck on there. Alright, C12. Let's grab another one of these bad boys. And these tweezers, I think, uh, I think those are pretty good spacing on those, so let's go ahead and do that again. You want to make sure you drop these little metal bits somewhere on the motherboard so that they can short something out. That's not working. <clears throat> I'm having a fantastic time. How do people do this? I'm just curious. Like, what's the right way? That's something you can put in the comment. I'm pretty sure nobody's going to watch 11 minutes of me trying to stick a capacitor to the board. I got way too confident with that first one. Okay. Let's see if we can make this side over here look a little bit better. Nope. But, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. All right, so we got eight, nine, and ten. We need C four. Uh, so we were supposed to have ten of those 47 picofarad caps. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where are we missing one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, C7, there it is. All right, let's get C7 done and then we can move on to our next value. All right, let's take a look here. I know that we didn't do the best job, okay? <laughs> These are not the prettiest, but they're gonna work. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna be fine. That one looks a little suspect right there. We might see if we can clean that up a little bit. That one looks like it's just gonna fall right off. But now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's eight, nine, ten. Okay, we've got ten, 47 microfarad. Uh, let's do this little guy here, C6, which is a one mic picofarad, and uh, we're gonna, I think, almost be ready to move on to the big boys. So one thing you wanna make sure that you do uh, before you put this board back into the machine is you want to make sure that it's good and dry and the way I take care of that is I make sure that I forget to order at least one value of capacitors so that you have to wait to order the other ones so it's been like a week and a half uh, I thought that I was going to go on Amazon I would just order on Amazon and it would get here uh, in a couple of days but uh, Amazon Prime 10 day shipping came through for me so it is literally a week and a half later uh, and I got some of uh, Amazon and China's Finest uh, one picofarad capacitors here. So 
we can do the last one. But I also took the opportunity to pick up uh, some Flux, uh, just to see what this stuff does, you know, uh, see what that does. And I picked up some uh, Totally Deadly um, Lead Rosin Core Solder instead of the lead-free uh, stuff that I was using before that came with my soldering station. Uh, pick that up. And so we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can get this uh, last capacitor on the board right here. This one pico ferret capacitor. So we'll pop this guy open. Is it pico? It's the pico, not the micro, right? Oh, wait, now i got to go back here. So the, the stripe side's negative, right? Yeah, see, they, see these guys got it figured out. They even put negative on there for me. Really appreciate that. And we'll do the snip snip. Where's my snips? Look at this. They got legs. They're gone again. And I know what you're thinking. He's going to forget to use the flux. I almost did, actually. So, you know, I could do that thing where you look up how to apply this stuff. But I've seen some people do it. And I think you just, you know, just you just put it on. And we're going to see what happens. All right. Let's go with this left-handed because that'll increase my chances of success. Um, all right, negative, negative. Well, I gotta say, other than that being completely unaligned, that went a lot better than the last time around. This is a real finesse maneuver that we got going on here. There we go. Look at that. That looks good. All right. Really want you to judge me hardcore. So we're going to take the camera off the mount here. We're really going to get up close and personal, at least as much as my camera will allow. These bad boys. Now, now see that one there? See that positive leg? Let's put a little more solder on there. I don't like the way that looks. Now this is hooked on here. We're doing great. I think that looks a little better. Yeah, I like that better. Man, I tell you what, I don't know if it's this solder that's working better or what, but it certainly can't be me getting better at soldering. I'm going to touch that up a little bit. That still looks terrible, but that's fine. It should work. I mean, that's good and solid. Uh, we made a little mess on the board there, but I'm sure that would clean up okay. Uh, so we got those guys. Here's what I decided to do on here. I know this is absolutely driving you crazy, but we're going to go ahead and just try it, because we can always undo this later and try to do it the right way, but that's what we got going on there. Uh, again, oh, this one is, that's real sexy right there. Just a big blob of solder. <laughs> but hey, that's how you, that's how you know it's going to stay on there for, for all time. You know, that's the way Apple did it in the factory. Uh, we got that guy get there. Again, these are pretty messy, but, you know, for never soldering anything surface mount, we need to add a little bit there, I feel like on C13. Uh, then let's flip this board around. Take a look at C12. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. And C1. Again, they're not pretty, but as long as nobody opens it up and looks, and as long as you don't tell anybody, I think we're going to be okay. So, I think the next thing to do um, before we get crazy, is let's put this board back in the machine, hook it back up, and just see if we can at least get back to the same point we did with the uh, question mark disc icon, or um, if we're moving backwards and in the wrong direction. That flux was pretty cool. I kind of like, kind of like using that stuff. That was probably something I should have done from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to go put this back in here. I did have a comment on my last video. Uh, somebody said to remove this neck board uh, because it's super easy to get the 
two broken, so we'll go ahead and do that. There. So even though I'm an idiot, you know, I'm not against taking advice. Uh, I am learning my way through this stuff, so you can too. Uh, so the board, we're going to put back. Again, just one last look to make sure nothing looks stupid. We didn't leave another one off. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and clean some of this, those leads from those capacitors off there. Let's get Tyrone back in there. Positive. That away. There you go, Tyrone. We'll put this uh, back on so that we can pretend that we're never going to have to take that back off again. Even though we know that this is probably going to have to come back out. So, uh, again, I don't want to get this in here necessarily permanently, um, but I do just kind of want to have it in there enough to test it. So let's get this hooked up here. Well, which way does that go? We're going to say it goes this way. Maybe it doesn't matter. We're going to say that it doesn't matter, even though we don't know what it is or what it's used for. So we got that. I think that's just the speaker, so it shouldn't uh, shouldn't be a phenomenal issue. All right, let's get our main connector hooked back up. We've got a ribbon cable to hook back up. Where did that ribbon cable go, by the way? I, I forgot. Oh, that's way up here. In. All right, SCSI. Notch. Top. That looks good. Line it up. Line it up. Push. If you feel resistance, push harder. Alright, let's walk ourselves through this. We hooked up the main connector. We hooked up the speaker. We hooked up the SCSI, the floppy, power to the hard drive. The neck board's hooked back up. It should work. Let's try turning it on. What are you saying? That's a horrible idea. Okay. How does this look? That looks great. What a shot. Now, if we did everything right, we should be back right where we started, which sounds bad, but that would be maybe the best thing that could happen. So here we go. Ho oh, ho! It didn't chime before, did it? We got a mouse cursor. And, and, give me that disc symbol. I want to see it. right about the time you think it's not going to show up is when it shows up. That is fantastic. That is awesome. Okay. So, we are, again, back where we started, but the next step is going to be get our SCSI to SD hooked up and ready to go. Uh, let's see. I think Electrically, is there anything else that we need to work on? Put that in the comments if I'm forgetting something. Uh, yeah, I think we're getting close. All right, so I think, yeah, for now, we're pretty much done with this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go through setting up the SCSI to SD, which, again, is another thing that I've never done in my life. Uh, so we'll go walk through how to configure that and get that set up to work in here to pull that old hard drive out. Um, and then I think once we get it and get it functional, we're going to install a couple programs, just really kind of run it through its paces um, and really just do maybe something that stresses the machine. I don't know. Can you stress these things that much? I don't know. And uh, the disk drive, we're probably going to, when we pull that hard drive out, 
let's take that disk drive out, the floppy drive, uh, just look that over real good, lube that up. They, they got those gears that break in there all the time. Uh, I have one of those replacements. Maybe we'll just replace it preemptively or maybe we'll just wait for it to break so we can do it again. That's that's probably what I'll do. And install some software, make sure it works. And then it, once it's functional and working, then we're going to rip it all apart again uh, and we'll start uh, going through and just kind of cleaning it up. Um, it's super yellow. Uh, if you can see, like these speakers here are about more the color of what uh, the chassis used to be in the first place. So you can see that it is yellowed pretty considerably. So we'll go through maybe doing some retro bright. I have another piece of equipment that I want to try to retro bright uh, before that. In fact, let me give you a sneak peek of that one right now. Yeah, so here's a future project. Uh, I picked this up. This is a Packard Bell uh, PB610, and it's got a 486SX processor and some amount of megabytes of RAM. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I got a sheet. I got a bunch of documentation on it. Uh, picked it up locally for like 50 bucks, and uh, the only issue was the gentleman I bought it from. He wanted to keep the hard drive, and and I'm always more than willing to oblige people when they want to keep their hard drives and keep their data safe. That's no problem whatsoever. So right there in front of them, I pulled it out. Here you go, 50 bucks. Um, brought this thing home. But yeah, it should be a fun little machine uh, to play around on. And I, I got Windows 3.1 installed, but just like the most basic installation. So I don't have any like drivers or whatever for the hardware that's in it. I don't know what sound card is in it. It's got a modem in there. Um, and so it's just uh, like the, the CD drive I haven't got working yet or anything. So I want to take this apart, rip it apart, clean it up, um, you know, get the battery out of there, obviously, get that replaced. Uh, but then uh, I was talking about retro writing. See, this is going to be my first retro brightening experiment here so uh, this bezel really easy to get this off I think actually now that I say that it came off with the uh, the whole case so maybe it's impossible to get off that's fine too uh, but uh, this is a computer that like while it is cool um, it is not like super duper rare or anything like that it's just another 486 from back in the day uh, so if the retro brighting goes awful um, that's not terrible. Worst case, I could always just paint that faceplate and like seven people would know. So that's going to be my retro writing experiment before the SE30 so that I can work on some of that and uh, see if I can get that sorted out. Uh, but that will be fun. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Again, don't take this as an instructional video or a way to do things. I, I know that this is really, really rough. Uh, but you know, I also, I, I'm just starting. So, you know, I, I think that people should get into this stuff and just dive into it. You don't have to necessarily start with something like a Macintosh SE 30. That's just what I happen to have. And that's the one that honestly, the battery was most worrisome. And I was like, well, I need, we need to get the battery out of there eh, since you have it apart. Um, but again, uh, if you saw me doing anything wrong or you have some advice or some suggestions, definitely put those in the comments. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Uh, wouldn't mind building some subscribers too. So if you like this, I'm going to try to get a about a video a week up um, on the Macintosh SE30. We're going to take a look at that Packard Bell. Um, and I also have something cool that I bet you've never even seen. Or at least if you have seen it, you probably haven't seen it for a long time. <laughs> so that's coming up on the channel here uh, as well. Maybe in the next uh, couple of weeks. Next video is definitely going to be the SCSI to SD and see if we can get this thing working. So thanks again. Subscribe if you can. If you liked the video, great. If you didn't, thumbs down to the end of days and uh, I'll see you soon.